today we're going to talk about igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are really, really very interesting and they're all around us here in the Connecticut River Valley. And this is something I don't want you to take for granted. Thank you. Igneous rocks are very prominent here in the Connecticut River Valley. We even have a lava flow. It's the ridge line that forms Poet Seat Tower. This is a basalt lava that flowed out as a fissure flow just a little over 200 million years ago. Today, this lava flow forms a ridge line on the landscape because it used to be flat, but thanks to faulting as Pangaea split back in the Mesozoic era. The lava and all the surrounding rocks have been tilted and then eroded and so the edge of that hard lava sticks up as a ridge line. And we see this not only in Poet Seat Ridge but the Holyoke Range as well. The Holyoke Range is four times thicker than the Poet Seat Lava. The Poet Seat Lava is a little over 100 and the Holyoke Range has 400 feet of lava. They both originated in the same way, however. They flowed out of fissures. They were hot, voluminous lava flows of a basaltic composition. We have some notable granite quarries around here as well, such as the famous Rock of Ages quarry in Vermont. There are many smaller granite quarries around the region as well. Your textbook has some great information, of course, on igneous rocks and volcanoes. And you will see many colorful illustrations of rock types, how to identify them, and most importantly, how they formed. Each rock tells a great story, and you'll be learning this week the characteristics to look at that will tell you that story. There is also the Katrin Weiss video on YouTube and boy, that's a really great one. She does such a good job of taking all of those concepts and terms and explaining them. They're well illustrated. And of course, being a YouTube video, you can watch it again and again. So the references on Moodle, make sure you see that. One of the big things that's really important when you study rocks is to look at their texture and secondarily is the composition. But the texture is so important because the texture is what was formed when the rock originated. It tells you the history of the rock. I have this saying that I like to relate. It's this, the texture tells the tale. I'm going to illustrate this with a couple of rocks from your Washington School collection. Number 29 is labeled as a porphyry. Now porphyry is a textural term, not a true rock term. It's the rock texture. This rock is basically a granite because it's light colored, it's felsic as we would say. But the word porphyry is put in here because it has larger crystals within the granite. So there are these larger crystals within the granite. So where did these larger crystals come from? The larger minerals form under slower cooling conditions. And so, for example, in a magma chamber, when most of the minerals and those components are coming together to form the minerals of the rock, sometimes there are minerals that form at a slower rate so that they get a chance to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. See, the slower the cooling rate, the more time there is to put the elements together into the minerals so they get bigger. You might think of it as going to a party. If you go to a party for 10 minutes, you don't get a chance to know anyone very well. But if you go to a party for three months, you get a chance to know people quite well. So you bond, you form a bigger, co more cohesive group. So the same way in a magma chamber, if there's a spot that cools more slowly, then there's more time for the elements to come together and to form bigger sizes. And then when the main mass of the rock forms at a faster rate, you can still see the minerals, but they're much smaller. So whenever you can see larger minerals mixed in with smaller sizes, it's called a porphyry. And it means that there's been two cooling rates here, a slower cooling and then a faster cooling. 
And by the way, it's always that way. It's always slower cooling first and then faster. It's awfully hard to get something cooling fast and then make it cool slower later. So that's what we call a porphyry texture. And you can find them both in coarse grained rocks like a granite and also in finer grained rocks like basalts. So lava flows, you see lava flows can have minerals rafted up from the magma chamber and then they get trapped in the quick cooled lava. The rock name is a basalt porphyry. Now those terms are mouthfuls to say, but I hope you get them down because it makes you look really smart when you can rattle those off. There are intermediate rock compositions and those rocks are a little bit difficult to tell from the other parts of the compositional scale. Let me give you an example here. So there's basalt, which is the mafic lava. It's got a lot of iron rich minerals in it. It's low silica. It's a very, very, very common lava type on earth. It flows easily. It's the rock of Poet Seed and the Holyoke Range. And that's a dark lava. Very easy to tell that it's dark. And then on the other end of the scale, when you put more silica into a lava flow, it becomes much lighter colored, and that is called rhyolite. Number 31 in your Washington set says felsite, but it's basically a rhyolite, a very, very fine-grained um, igneous rock, an old lava flow that's high in silica. So you can see the difference between the felsite and the basalt. There is definitely a compositional difference that you see here based on the color. If we look at the rocks that cool slowly, there's granite, which is the high silica rock, and then there's gabbro, which is the lower silica rock, which is much darker in color. And we can see those two examples from your Washington School kit. So I'm going to leave Katrin Weiss and your textbook to explain more of this igneous phenomena. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions. And now I'm going to leave you with a riddle. Basalt is one of the most common rocks on earth, and yet it is not often seen. How can that be? Well, if you know about plate tectonics, the answer is easy. It's under the oceans. Basalt forms the crust of the ocean basins, and the oceans make up 70% of the globe. The other 30%, that crustal type is continental, and that's basically, if we average it out, made up of granite. So anyway, granite versus basalt, great igneous rocks. Enjoy your journey through geology. See you in another week. Here we go.